We all love taking photos, but the editing and organizing isn't so fun, and to truly capture the magic of a moment often seems futile. That's why I've developed the Momentous Mind Camera, a first-of-its-kind peripheral capable of capturing not images, but entire experiences. Not only that, but these memories are transferred to the most advanced storage device we already own, our brains. Simply point the camera at your subject, focus, and I mean truly, deeply focus. Be present, take it all in, and then snap away. This advanced shutter produces a distinct sound frequency that your brain will intuitively come to associate with those important memories so you can relive them in vivid detail. Warning, the Momentous Mind Camera is a highly experimental device. The quality of your memories will depend on your brain's specific capabilities. Never take a selfie with the Momentous Mind Camera as it may cast into shallow realm of eternal self-reflection from which you may never return. Brain sold separately. Greetings, I'm Devin Enrique Vigile de Montes, the chief scientist here at Momentous and the inventor of the Momentous Mind Camera. In this video, I'll be walking you through the process of creating your own memory capture device. The beauty of this device truly lies in its simplicity. But make sure you follow these instructions carefully to reduce the risk of unintended consequences. We have observed very rare cases of cerebral liquefaction. It happens. This is a very experimental technology in its earliest phases, so the long-term effects are not yet known. In fact, we've kept this device out of sight from any and all regulatory agencies for the sake of getting it to you as soon as possible. Due to the fact that you're printing it yourself, we are not liable for anything that happens. Great, let's make a mind camera. First off, let's take a quick look at the STL files. There are several variations, so you may have a different number of files. For example, here we have two versions of the aperture, and they're purely ornamental, so you can choose your preferred look. There are also a few different back parts, depending on whether you want strap connections or not, things like that. Some of the lenses are made of multiple parts as well. There's this kit lens, which offers a medium range of adjustment, the zoom lens with a more prominent scope, and this fixed prime lens, which offers simplicity and the most compact form. So I'll select my preferred parts, the whole shebang with strap connectors and the big zoom lens, and I'll bring those into my slicer. I went through a lot of prototypes to make these files easy to print, so your best default print settings should do. I'll just increase the wall count to three perimeters, ensuring that the spring of the trigger here prints solid, and so all the parts are fairly robust. I also like to enable this setting to have just one wall on the first layer for cleaner graphics, and using the Arachne wall generator also gives me cleaner walls overall. There are also a few multicolor versions of the camera body. For those, you'll select all the parts you need at once. So for the back here, we'll make sure to only choose one variation on the strap connectors. I'll do strap A again. And this will vary a bit between slicers, but I'll make sure not to scale or move any of the parts. And by importing them as a single object, everything stays aligned. Now I can just select the colors for each component, since I'm printing on my multicolor X1 carbon here but these multicolor parts are also designed to work with multi-pass printing for a single extruder printer. Let's print up our parts, and here's what I've ended up with. We can start by installing the ever so important shutter mechanism. This spring was designed to be robust enough to work with PLA, but for a longer shutter life, you might opt for a more wear-resistant material like PETG or ABS. Also, make sure that it's popped all the way flush to the back and the trigger is freely moving. Again, I'm not responsible for anything that happens, but I should note that the strong Pavlovian response induced by this amazing shutter has shown incredible power at modifying the behavior of other humans and animals. Of course, that kind of testing has been deemed highly immoral and unethical by the scientific community as a whole, so just keep me out of it. Some other fun uses include learning echolocation 
or pretending you're an old-timey gang criminal. Anyways, we'll continue with the shutter assembly by snapping on the back plate with firm and even pressure. And now we'll work on the lens, first sliding together the two inner parts, and then for the outer ring, we'll align the little inner pins with the helical tracks and work that into place by pulling the outer ring onto those tracks. If done right, the telescoping action should be quite smooth and gentle. Next, we'll place the aperture and then thread the lens onto the camera body. The threads are very short, but if printed well and screwed on securely, you won't need to glue it into place. Now I'll add the optional strap. While you're welcome to connect any strap you desire, I've designed these special strap connectors to be compatible with the Momentus Mind camera. They work with widely available paracord, which you can get in any number of colors, and it's quite easy to work with. I'll cut my strap to length and then use a lighter to melt and shape the end of the nylon cord. First, so it fits through this cap, and then again, just to make the end wide enough to not pull back out. We'll do that on both sides. And uh, important message, fire is hot, molten nylon is hot, so watch out. Let's thread the first side on, and then straighten out our paracord so nothing's twisted. And for the same reason, I'll first twist the other side counterclockwise before screwing it on, so it ends up nice and clean. And that's it. Here's our custom premium Momentous Mind camera, all set to capture some wonderful memories. As an alternative to the neck strap, you can also use a shorter loop of paracord and melt the ends together into this pointy bit just thin enough to wriggle into that strap cap. And now we can use that keychain loop on the bottom of the camera to add this nice keychain or wrist strap. Of course, an old fashioned metal keychain ring also works well. So however you design your camera, it's uniquely your own. Congratulations, you've made your own mind camera all by yourself. Remember, I am not responsible for anything that happens now. So get out there and make some memories.